Hey guys, welcome back to part 4 of our incubator series. Before we begin, I'd like to thank everyone who liked the previous video and were asking for more. So in this video, I'm going to be making the motor and temperature controller part of our circuit. Let me just fix something before we move on. In the previous video, I forgot to add a resistor to the base of the transistor. So let me just go ahead and fix that real quick. Let's move on to the motor circuit. So until now, I wanted to make my own edge bridge for the motor controller, but then it turned out that it was pretty complex for a 20 minute YouTube video. And I also stumbled upon a great motor driver as well, which we're going to use today. The motor driver is called TB6612FNG, which is a MOSFET edge bridge driver, which means less heat dissipation and better performance. So we're going to wire it up by connecting VM to 12 volt, ground to common ground VCC to Arduino's 5 volt. We're going to be connecting A0 to motors directly uh, and of course we're going to be using connectors for that. B0 is another set of pins capable of driving another motor. We don't need it yet but we're going to make a connector for that as well in case we need it later on. PWM pins are going to be used to control the speed of our motor. There are different PWM pins on different board, so make sure that you connect PWM pins to PWM pins of your board. AI pins are the input pins uh, that we're going to connect to digital pins of the Arduino. BI pins are the input pins for B0 motor. Let's save our precious pins and not connect them up right now. The standby pin is used to connect the driver in a low current consuming mode when it is not operating, and we aren't going to need that in this application. So let me just go ahead and add that to the circuit. Let's connect a 100 microfarad capacitor across VM and ground pin for the inrush current. And with that, looks like we are done making the motor circuit. Okay, now that that's done, let's move on to the temperature controller circuit. You can use anything that's rated for 12 volt as a heater, but I'm going to be using a 12 volt ceramic PTC heater, and we are going to be controlling it with a MOSFET circuit which will work for us when we program Arduino to control heater with a method called PID. If you don't know what PID is, just keep following the series and it should come up when I'm programming the incubator. So let's go ahead and add a 3-pin connector to connect to our PTC heater. I'm using 3-pins connector because the connector I'll be using has a spacing that's equivalent to 3-pins of this specific connector. Let's rename the pins so we don't get confused later. So you can use any MOSFET, but make sure that it is a logic level MOSFET and has a gate threshold of less than 5 volt. I'm going to be using an IRF520 which is easily available here. The MOSFET pins are pretty similar to the transistor but the names are a bit different, so let me go over them. The bottom one in the schematic is called source, which is normally connected to ground, that's common with Arduino and 12 volt. The one to the left is called the gate, which is going to turn on or off the motor. The one on the top is called drain, which is normally connected to negative or ground of the heater, and of course we need to connect 12 volt directly to the heater. So let me just go ahead and wire it up and I'll explain how it works when I'm done.
I'm also going to be using a transistor in between Arduino and the MOSFET just to be safe. Note again that all the grounds are common in this circuit. You must have noticed that weird resistor between the gate of the MOSFET and the 12 volt line. Well that is to keep the gate pin pulled up high. If we don't put that then there is going to be weird behavior on the heater side meaning that is going to turn on or off on its own. But putting that resistor gives us full control of the circuit. You can know more about it by searching MOSFET gate resistor. And with that, I think we are done with our circuit. I don't think there is any explanation needed after I explain the connections. So that is going to be it for today. In the next video, we are going to be finalizing the circuit and going over it one more time. And we are going to convert it to PCB and hopefully finish it in one video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like the video and I'll see you in part 5.